Real Agriculture's coverage of Agritechnica 2019 is brought to you by Bravant. Seed. Yield. Easy. Sean Haney here with Real Agriculture. We're in Agritechnica 2019 in Hanover, Germany. And right now I'm joined by John Norlos of Ropa. John, how's it going? Very good. Okay, so behind us is a crazy large machine. It is a self-propelled beet harvester. Tell us about it. Well, uh, this harvester will function all everything, like defoliate the beets, it uh, digs them, and then has a cleaning process, and then a bunker on the back that holds about 30 ton with unloading conveyor uh, onto a truck or onto a pile or onto a beet cart. So in Canada, we, we don't see these as commonly as we do over here in Europe, but some of these machines are starting to end up in the North American market. Yeah, so uh, back in about 2000, Michigan Sugar came to Ontario looking for acres of sugar beets. Um, so we didn't have a lot of the pull type equipment in our inventory. So we started looking for uh, sugar beet harvesting equipment. We were aware of self propels in Europe at that time. So a friend of mine and myself went to Europe, bought the first uh, ROPA, brought it into North America, and we decided we would be interested in distributing them. And since that time, we've gone to Michigan, Nebraska, Minnesota, Alberta, and slowly on these markets are growing. Yeah, very, very neat. So what are, this, this machine won as well, a uh, silver medal for innovation here at the show, which is, uh, they don't hand those out very easily. What was the innovation? Yeah, so they're constantly working on new items that they can introduce on their machines. This time the innovation is for the uh, monitoring the, the depth or the height from the machine to the soil. Uh, this time is for a defoliator, uh, maintaining that height uh, to the soil and then the scalper uh, monitoring the height of the sugar beet and then doing an optimal scalping. Now, my my assumption is is that the same reason why people move from pull type forage harvesters to self-propelled units is the same reason why you would make the jump to a self-propelled beet harvester. Yeah, because really you don't use that harvester for that long of a period. It's a short harvest of uh, two months in some areas. It's just the efficiency and uh, maneuverability. One man is operating a defoliator and a harvester and a, and a cart. So um, fuel consumption is less on one machine than if you run three. Um, we have lots of guys in, that have a mouse to accompany the harvester. Uh, the mouse just picks up the piles, but what that does is uh, one operator on the harvester and one operator on a beet cart, you can send them to the field and they do the harvesting, that's it. What would the cost of a unit be? What would be the price range? Well, Canadian dollars uh, be right close to the million dollars. Yep. yep. So, so typically when you're talking to people that are maybe thinking about a self-propelled beet harvester, what, how many acres of beets do you have to have? Because I'm sure there's an opportunity, well, I can do my own beets. I've also got neighbors that have beets. So what are the amount of acres do you need to be harvesting in order to pay for it? So typically if I uh, would have around 1300 1400 acres myself I'd say it's, it's uh, worthwhile to have my own machine if I only have uh, 900 to a thousand I'd be looking at a good use machine just to keep the capital down to spread that cost around the, those acres yeah. Yeah, very very interesting well John thanks a lot I really appreciate it and good luck with the rest of Agritechnica right. you're welcome thanks so very much